Solo queue is a big part of gaming. A lot of players, including myself, solo queue every day. Now, some players prefer it, some players are kind of forced into solo queue, and some players don't really care. They just kind of load up the game and matchmake. But the video aims to arm you with the tools necessary to succeed when playing solo. That's solo versus other solo players, solo versus a fire team, because in Destiny 2, May 8th will bring a new expansion, Warmind, and some changes are being made to PvP. One of the biggest changes is Crucible ranks. Through leveling up to the fabled glory rank in the competitive playlist, you're going to be able to earn a weapon from Shaxx. That weapon is the very coveted Redrix Claymore. It's a pulse rifle in which all other pulse rifles will be judged. It's going to be extremely good in PvP, but I could also see it being extremely good in PvE as well. Therefore, a lot of players are going to be going for it. This is the prize. So in the background, there's some generic gameplay. These tips are for general solo play, but to get the Claymore, it has to be in competitive. The modes are going to be objective-based, such as survival. The modes themselves don't really matter with what we're talking about today. The tips are going to be used by solo players going for the weapon, but the information is universal. Sit back and relax, and as we go through these tips, imagine yourself in these scenarios. We're talking about solo queue. A lot of you guys are going to be doing this. We have the weekend coming up. It's time to start preparing, but the video isn't just to get ready for May 8th. It's to help you all around, and we're going to talk about some things we've discussed in prior videos and go over some new things as well. So starting off, tip number one, and this is sincere. If you're having issues solo queuing and not getting wins, search an LFG or play with some friends. I know, I know, the video is about solo queue, but honestly, the first line of defense is to get a fire team going, to get some teamwork going. I know that isn't an option for some of you guys, but again, this is your best bet. We need to point this out, even though it isn't the basis of the video. So tip number two is going to be your confidence. This is your mentality, not to play scared or when things are going bad, you don't play your style of game. Or you start playing super, super reserved. Here's the deal, every time I load into a match, I'm the best player on the board. That's my mentality. I'm above the rest. I could be facing Luminosity, Sir Demetrius, Real Crafty on the other team. Are these players better than me? A thousand times yes, absolutely, but nothing should affect your game. Nothing should affect how you approach your engagements other than what you think needs to happen right there in that moment. Not only in gaming, but in everything, there is a difference between being confident and being cocky. Cocky has a sense of arrogance to it. That's not what we're shooting for. We want to be confident in our skills and execute our decisions in game. So when you die, the fault is your own. Players are going to make plays on you. There's nothing that you can do about that. That's a part of gaming. You just sit back and say, you know what? That was a good play, man. But for the most part, you take the death, you notice what you did wrong, try not to let it happen again, and you move on to your next engagement. Be confident, don't be hard on yourself, it's a game, it should be fun. When things aren't going your way, realize that there are things that you need to work on, and be confident in yourself. Say it's survival, and about five years ago I would say this when I was playing games, if I was ever in a 3v1 situation I would be very anxious, I would be overwhelmed, but then I started getting confident. You know you're in a 3v1 situation, it's gonna be hard, but you know what you need to do. You need to try to systematically force three separate 1v1s, try to win the round, try to win the match. And that leads us to tip number three, look at the parties in game. This is going to give you some insight to the role that you need to play. Before the match, see if you're going against a two-man, three-man, full team. And on the flip side, and importantly, look at your team. Look to see if you have two players, three players grouped together. And here's why that's important. See, you are a lone wolf player. You like to go on flanks, you make solo plays. But within the first minute of the match, you're probably going to see enough to know if that's going to work or not. Say the game starts, you go on a nice flank, but they turn and three players just focus you down. They called you out, they're using some teamwork. So you spawn up, you're in a battle in mid-map, team versus team, you break off to go on a flank again and the same thing happens to you. You need to stop and know that that team isn't going to let you do that. You need to change your game plan accordingly. On your team, if you have two players playing together and say they're in party chat not talking, you have two choices. Number one, stick with them, run together as three, or stick with the other random player. Out of the gate, that's the first thing you guys need to start thinking about. If you're paired with a three-man team, you need to accept the fact that you're the random. You need to do everything in your power to help this team get the win. If your team has a three stack, and their team has a three stack, it can come down to that fourth random player on each team. So if your three-man team is pushing, you need to help them out. Don't be off doing your own thing. If you are, make sure that whatever you're doing is helping what they're doing. Not in the back waiting for power ammo, not on the opposite side of the map nowhere near them. There's a role to fill. And that leads us to our fourth tip, roles. At the start of tip three, I said looking at the teams will give you a quote insight to the role that you need to play. There are roles to be had. You can start off the game 
and decide, you know what, I'm going to be a team shotter, have a scout, ranged weapon, and help pushes by putting shots in. You don't necessarily put yourself in the middle, but you're ever so slightly behind your team, constantly being a nap, putting shots into opponents whenever you can. Because everybody does want to be the hero, you want to go out there, be the slayer of your team, but sometimes, with how people play, not everyone can do that. The goal is winning, getting that rank up, getting closer to that claymore. So if you see a teammate struggling, say he's going on bad flanks, constantly dying, get with him, stay next to him and help him out. Even if he has no idea that you're helping him, you two are working together. That's the play, that's what you need to do. Your loadout also dictates what you do. Say you go hand cannon SMG, you're saying that you want to be CQC, it's a great loadout. But what happens when you're on Midtown and your three other teammates are running scouts? They want to stay back, they want to stay reserved. They don't really push, but notice what is going on. Ideally, you want to be rounded enough to defend yourself in CQC and then mid to long range, but in that scenario, you can't be up in their face when your team isn't being aggressive. Sure, you're going to get a couple double kills, but more often than not, you're going to get shut down. And you're going to ask yourself, what is my team doing? Stop and think for a second. You know exactly what they're doing, even if it's kind of twisted around. They're probably saying the same thing about you. What is my teammate doing? So there are times for those pushes, and using your game sense is going to get you better at that. It's something to think about, a role. Not everyone has the same playstyle. What does your team need? Do they need an anchor? Maybe you grab heavy at the start, and you bait it in the entire game. Your goal is to deny heavy the best that you can, and as they rush it, you use your heavy to stop them, you grab the heavy, rinse and repeat. These roles can change. Sometimes you steamroll a team, sometimes your team gets steamrolled, and we're going to talk about that in a second snowballing effect. Every game that you're playing solo, you should have an objective. You use your situational awareness, your game sense to fill in what your team needs. Say no one's going to the objective. Stay with your team until they're close enough, then you go for it. Say you have a weak link. Well, make that weak link have a 7k AD with all the assists that you're giving him by being with him. You do what you need to do to win the game. That's the objective. Usually, like I said, within the first minute of the game, it all becomes kind of clear. If you're trailing in the match, the enemy team probably has a power position on the map. So we're going to use a scenario earlier where you have three teammates that are super reserved, you're very aggressive, you want to get in there with your melee, your grenades, your SMG, and let's say the enemy team is right around B. So your team pushes up, it's a 4v4 battle, it's a standoff. Your role right there is to get in at some point and start doing your damage, but here's the deal. When this 4v4 standoff happens, you need to wait for a pick. Don't go in unless opportunity presents itself. Wait for your team shotting team to down an enemy with you. Because it's now a 4v3, that's when you go. And I've found that once you team shot next to a random teammate, and you down the enemy together on his screen, he sees you right next to him, and you strongly push. He's probably going to follow, because reserved players will do that when they see a momentum shift. And that's one of the times that they start pushing. A lot of match outcomes rely on what you do, it's things like that. And on the flip side, so you have a super aggressive teammate, it doesn't matter what the situation is, he's always going to be right in there, he's going to rush right in with his SMG, his shotgun, his grenades. So what do you do with in that situation? Most of the time it's best to be right there with him, because you know what? Your team has a better shot of taking a position if you go in with him, because if he immediately dies, you're in the same position, but now it's a 4v3. And you have to wait anyway for him to come back around. You might as well go in and see what kind of damage you guys can do together. And sometimes it's tough. You know, I talked about the weak leak. Say you're not very strong of a player. It's one of those things to make sure you're with somebody. It's one of those things to, when opportunity presents itself, to rush in or to come back. They're very important decisions. Tip number five, overcoming a snowball. It happens. Teams start whooping on you and it gets out of hand really quickly. The score starts to snowball in their favor. And with the recent sandbox changes, the top reason now is power ammo advantage. When you play a good team and they really start grooving, multiple enemies will have power ammo. And they're going to protect new power ammo when it spawns. You need to break the cycle. Power ammo is a game changer, so three scenarios come to mind when this starts happening. Number one, if you kill someone and they drop a brick, grab it and look for another enemy with power ammo. Get it out of their hands. Number two, Look at the closest power ammo spawn and bait it. You either bait an enemy that already has it and wants it, or you bait a random enemy trying to get it. Number three, another option to break that power cycle is to hold on to all abilities and grenades. Don't throw them first chance you get, don't throw them blindly, specifically use them to take power ammo away. Have that mindset. Your main goal is to end that power cycle. Do everything in your power to stop it. That's the first step. And for a lot of that, you're gonna be trying to do this solo. 
and we're a solo player so it works. The game's already getting out of hand so don't expect your team to be there for you. It's like you're already looking at a loss so you do what you need to do to try to flip that momentum. It's tough. Tip number six, find a battle buddy. And we've talked about this a lot in previous videos. When all else fails, when you can't do anything, you need to spawn in, locate the closest teammate, and go to him. Let that be a part of your spawn in routine, regardless. It doesn't matter if you have a two man, a three man fire team with you, it doesn't matter if you want a lone wolf, because you can do all that, you can do all your flanks once you gain ground as a team. And I stress that. That's the number one thing you should do. The best thing, find your team, stick with them, push with them together, and all that decision making comes when your teammate is there. If you go on a flank, it's because you break off from your team when you're right next to them. Not when you spawn in, you see your three teammates on the right side of the map, so you decide to go left side. It goes back to that scenario earlier. You get a pick, it's a 4v3 in your advantage. That's when you break off, that's when you go on your flank. You find that battle buddy, you go to him, then you start making your decisions. It works wonders in all shooter games that you play. The seventh and final tip is player tendencies. All players have tendencies. Your enemies have tendencies, your teammates have tendencies, you have tendencies. A lot of players strafe the same exact way in every gunfight. A hunter will always throw an arc bolt down, jump way up in the air and hit fire his SMG. A sniper likes certain lanes on a map. When a player has a shotgun, that player will either hold on to it and use it when he needs to, or he's gonna get it and come right your way blindly. The scenario earlier, the one where your team is being super reserved, they stay back, that's a part of your game now. You have to play with that, you have to play around that, you have to overcome that if you think you need to. It's game sense. Our last Crucible Tip video went over that in depth. It's the most important tool. It's knowing that Hunter is going to be up in the air after that arc bolt hits the ground. It's knowing your team's going to be nowhere to be found when you're up in an enemy's face. It's knowing that they just got a shotgun and the first red dot you see is likely that guy with the shotgun running straight at you. These players have tendencies, so start to use them against them. This video won't only help out with your solo play, but playing with random teammates, period. Nothing we really talked about has to do with pure gun skill. It's a mindset, a mentality, the mental side. Thinking things through with your game sense. The entire goal is to put yourself in a position to succeed. That's the number one thing, above all. That's what we really talked about today. That's the message. Do what you need to do to put yourself in the best position to succeed. Sometimes that means doing something you're not really comfortable with. That might be playing super aggressive. That might mean being a lone wolf at times. It changes as the game goes on. Each engagement is different, its own, it's separate. So I hope this can help you in the upcoming ranked playlist. I hope this can help you, period, in some of the games that you guys play. Good luck on your quest for the Redrix Claymore. I thank you guys for spending a little bit of your day with me, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.